Hi, I'm Eric Jurgensen, an amateur blacksmith based in Oklahoma City. Welcome to my basement shop. In my last video, I talked about matching stock size and coil size. In particular, I showed how small gauge wire, like this 9 gauge wire, heats much better in smaller coils, like this 3 quarter inner diameter coil with three loops. I've recently been working on a commission involving building wheat twists out of two pieces of this 9 gauge wire, like this, pointed at both ends with kind of asymmetric points so that you can put them together after twisting to make something called a wheat twist. This piece came out pretty well, except that it ended up too squared off from the forge welding. The hammering squared off the nice round kernels of wheat and I decided it just wasn't good enough for the commission, so I decided to remake it. And in doing so, I thought, let me show you how the forge welt went. It's amazing how fast this machine can bring this material to a forge welding heat. I made a slightly bigger coil for working on this. Bigger in that it's longer, it's exactly the same diameter. I wrapped it around the same pipe. So let's take a look and see how these forge welds went. I'm heating the first piece so I can bend it in the middle. Now I've bent it not quite in the center, and now I'm going to take it to the vise and squeeze it tight. Second piece, this will get the left hand twist. Same deal on tightening. Now I'm ready to start the right hand twist. And I started the twist and it popped out of the vise, so let's heat it up again, get it back in the vise, and give it a better twist. There we go, and now we're going to heat it up and kind of tighten it and even it a bit. One more pass on evening and we're going to be there. Alright, now we're ready for the left hand twist. It popped out of the vise, so we're just going to heat it back up. And I did a right hand twist, so now we're going to heat it up and straighten it. And it's straight enough now. Let's get that left hand twist going in only two tries. There we go. That's a good start. Let's tighten it up a bit. Get in close. Just a little bit more at the end. A little more at the, the whole thing. Alright, now we're going to bend these together, so I need a little heat so I can get them to come together. Now we're ready to try a bit of welding. And in just about nine seconds we're going to see sparks. There you go. Unfortunately the other camera didn't work so we don't have any, uh, any video of this process from the point of view of the anvil. The sound of the hitting is the sound of uh, hitting with a piece of 1x2 against a 2x4 block to avoid squaring up the edges of the kernels as I weld. having a little trouble getting this to go together. What I concluded after doing this project is that that 1x2 was considerably too light and I need a bit of a wooden mallet or something stronger. But now I've got the weld together. <coughs> I need to spread the end apart so that I can get the stem in between it. And that's going to test my welds and nope. Not quite enough. I'm only after an ornamental weld, but that still wasn't good enough. 
So, we'll do it again, and this time we've got footage from the animal. Alright, and you see that, that hitting, that's too light, and oh, also consequently a little too rapid. I just need something a bit heavier, but also wooden so that it doesn't distort the uh, kernels. See, I still don't really have that well together. But nonetheless, the machine is a joy to use, and the welds are super quick when they take. push that block back onto the anvil. I'm starting to knock it over the edge. Still haven't gotten the end with the hairs welded together, so a little more heat there. Turn it around. Do a little straightening before I go back for heat. Another welding heat. We're going to try to get this welded a little closer to the uh, stem end. Look at those sparks. One last little bit. I'm really actually getting ready to separate the ends a little bit, and I'm going to do this in the vise so that the weld is supported while I'm doing it. I don't know if you've worked with wood like this before, but you just get used to ignoring the burning wood. It's just no big deal. attempting to get that uh, welded together. <clears throat> I'm happy with it, so I'm going to use the residual of the heat to spread the two tabs. And then I'm going to need to set them fairly tightly around the end of the stem. Now what I've done with the stem is I've drawn it out mostly, but I've left that last little bit, oh, three inches, uh, not it's basically at the parent stock size of a quarter inch round stock. So I've got the stem there in the vise, and I'm going to use the tongs to squeeze it tightly. It would be ideal if those tabs were the same length. And it's going to give me a little bit of grief uh, getting that longer tab to weld, but I will get it to weld. It's just going to take a little more effort and a little more flux. All right, so the key to making this, to setting this, is to use a pair of tongs and get it set up on fire bricks. There just isn't time to get it to the anvil. The stock is awfully small. 
I suppose someone might be able to do it. I can't. But it is so easy to set with a pair of tongs. See, there it is. It's set. Now it's tacked together, and I can take another welding heat and go over to the anvil to start the welding. Well, okay, let me tack it a little bit more. I'm trying to get that other tab to take, and it's not going to. I'm going to have to do it later with the hammer. But now I'm ready to start welding. Sorry again, this part, the other camera, uh, shut itself off, so I don't have the anvil view. But that's okay, spoiler alert. Something is going to go wrong with this weld. So the weld's actually going pretty well, and most of it is set together, and one part of it isn't. And what I've done is i set the hammer down to turn down the heat setting, the power setting, so that it heats slower, because I'm having a little trouble with one of the two tabs that isn't quite tacked into the, to the stem. And by heating it more slowly, I'm letting a little more heat transfer to that tab. One of the difficulties with the induction heater is you can get the main body to welding temperature and sometimes you can't get the rest of it to welding temperature, some smaller piece of it. But in this case I'm going to manage it. In fact I have. So now I'm ready to proceed with the welding. So the sound of that hammer was the hammer being set down in frustration. The weld made it, but I ended up melting it off or something. So I've scarfed it, and now I'm going to get some flux on it, tidy up the scarfs, get some flux on it, um, and we're going to do the weld again. This time with both cameras recording. Sometimes holding this is tricky, and you're going to see sparks here in a second. Just, it's been a long enough time, I'm getting a little shaky, and I'm having trouble holding it. So I'm going to have to sort of take a deep breath and reset myself here. Kind of feel how it goes. And I got one side hotter than the other, so I'm kind of letting it cool at the same time, so that they'll kind of even out. I was just holding them together so that it could kind of even the heat. And now I'm going to make it. And set it with the tongs. Works quite nicely. There it is. Weld is set. So now we're going to proceed with actually getting the weld together. Since this didn't have two tabs, I didn't have as much trouble getting all of the weld to join. And it's just a delight how quickly this machine brings these things to welding heat. And this weld is proceeding quite nicely. So it's all looking good, everything's coming together, uh, the weld is taking, I'm getting everything to join and blend. I'm going to get one little bit to blend right here so I'm getting some flux on it. That way they don't have to quite be as even a heat. The flux will get the scale to melt at a lower temperature and I can get fusion. So that little piece that I'm having trouble getting to heat. Hopefully the flux will take care of it.
and it basically has. Everything's looking good. I'm pretty happy with where we are. A little more blending there at the back side of the weld. and another disaster. And I dropped it on the floor in frustration. Well, my apologies for the parts where the cameras didn't work. And after that second disaster, I decided I needed to back up, turn off the cameras, and uh, kind of take my time with yet one more weld. And it worked out. Here it is. There are three forge welds right in here. All of them excellent welds. Everything looks good. Going to do a uh, brash brass brush finish on this one to give it a yellow hue put some clear coat on it and ship it off i think it's looking pretty good so until next time as blacksmith jim coke says forge on and make beautiful things <laughs>